to the BE Run Project Food Project. I'm your host, Laura Lucas. Join me each week for recipes, tips, and guidance to help you cook for the miles ahead. Welcome back, BE Runners, to the Food Project. This week, we're going to show you how to make the perfect post long run meal. In fact, Rick and I call it our Recover Me Breakfast Casserole. I know it's kind of lame, but we think it's cute. So this has everything that you need post long run, or even if you're doing a longer workout, it has complex carbohydrates, has lots of protein and lots of great fresh vegetables, and even some dairy mixed in there. We'll give you a couple of ideas to make this vegetarian, but because we this is mostly an egg-based casserole, we really can't do vegan. I know there are some egg um, options for vegan or, or vegan egg options, um, so you could you could try that. We would love if you do for you to tell us how it turns out. Um, but we're just going to kind of stick to that. We'll show you how to change it up and do some variations on this as well. So the first thing that we're going to do is we want to actually turn your oven on to 425. Um, I've already done that, so we'll just give you a second to do it. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to start with some sweet potatoes. Now, I like the sweet potatoes um, because they're a really great complex carbohydrate, and that actually burns longer and gives you sustained energy. Um, it also is a great source of vitamin C which helps with something called muscle catabolism. And that's, that's muscle breakdown, catabolism is breakdown. And so it actually helps after your long run for your muscles to not break down as much. It helps to build them back up. That vitamin C is important. Rick, however, doesn't like sweet potatoes. That's because if I eat any more sweet things, I will be so damn sweet, it might be hard for people to take. So, he likes regular potatoes. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to do a half and half. And you can do this if you have somebody in your family who also doesn't like sweet potatoes. I don't know why that would be, but. Maybe because they don't taste great. So what I did before we got on camera was I took the sweet potatoes and the regular potatoes. I just poked a bunch of holes in them and I threw them in the microwave to get them a little bit soft. Now, some people like to bake them. Um, I don't have time for that. Well, actually, I have all the time in the world for that. It's quarantine. I'm just too lazy to do it. So we just throw them in the microwave for about five minutes, and then we're just going to dice them up. I leave the skins on because that's where the most, uh, most of the really great nutrients are. Try to make sure you leave the skin on your fingers, too, as you're cutting there on the cutting board. No confidence, no confidence at all. So it depends on how, um, you can cut these as small or as large as you want them. Basically, you are going to be lining your casserole dish with these. I like to do it a little bit, what I call rustic style, so that I don't have to worry about dicing everything incredibly small. Laura grew up um, out west and spent much of her life on the frontier prior to moving to Cincinnati. And so rustic to her and rustic to you might mean very different things. But since she spent so many years, you know, riding horses and bringing in the cattle and working the plains. I grew up in Massachusetts. So I think I'm so much funnier than I probably am. You, you, you are not that funny. I oh. hate to tell you. Well, so then it's right. I do think I'm funnier than I probably am. Okay. This size casserole dish um, is really great. It will be enough for uh, two people and you will have about mm, four extra pieces left over. Also known as servings. Serving. That was the word that I was looking for. So here's the thing. When I do these, I try to be like, all I can think of in my head is, is, is Martha Stewart. And I'm trying to be like, Oh my God, get? that's really what's in your head. No, it's not that. It's probably more like, I don't know, one of the food network people, but like, it's not <laughs> me and I can't do any of that. So I just sound completely ridiculous, but I, the last thing that popped into my head while I'm watching you do this is Martha Stewart, just so you know. <laughs> right. Outstanding. So we're going to line the bottom of these. 
Now I can't get it out of my head. We should try to do the entire. Damn you, Martha Stewart. We should try to do the entire thing like as Martha, Martha Stewarty. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, maybe the next do? time we cook, we can. We can dress up as. Yeah. yeah. You can dress up as Martha Stewart. I look great in khakis and a white blouse. Oh my God. Is that what Martha Stewart? Did? I kind of feel like maybe, but I don't know. I, no I don't know if that was before or after her tax evasion thing. Oh, yeah. Or her stock trading. I guess it really wasn't tax evasion. Well, it kind of was tax evasion. Maybe she got some like fashion sense while she was in prison. This she is going, she like, does she does wear a lot of jumpsuits. <laughs> Direction that I thought it was. Going yeah, to. this is a weird conversation. This is really weird. Are you all enjoying this banter? Sorry, guys, <laughs> but at least it's making giving me time to cut all this stuff up. Mm, so rustic. So rustic. This is also where Laura gets lazy because she doesn't want to dice it as she said she was going to do. I don't dice it. I just chop We call it this up. cutting it up. <laughs> See, that's the problem. Like, with the show notes, like, I actually have to, like, figure out, like, how much do I put in? I'm like, I don't know. I just put in what I have. And if I don't have it, then I just change the recipe. But I can't do that now because we're trying to tell people what we do. Mm. And I'm sure all of you find great meaning and value in that. Probably don't need all of that to be honest. So we'll just. You're right. My cutting skills, my knife skills are probably superior to Martha's. <laughs> wow. I got a hot mess on this. <laughs> what is going on? This cutting board. What is going on? Yeah, so it's a little bit, like I said, they're kind of like par bait. So, yeah, all and, and I'm going to actually interject for a second here. So you can see that she actually, because I really don't like sweet potatoes, um, so she literally did half and half. And so when this is done cooking, I literally get my half plus my extra servings mm -hmm. to go in the fridge, so and she gets hers. Mm -hmm. um, so you if you, you actually, I am positive. Um, I, can, I can tell you, though, it actually works pretty well. So you can literally just kind of cut it in half, and if somebody doesn't like one versus the other, they can get their piece. That's true. So what you're gonna do with this now is you're going to actually put this in the oven so that it can crisp up a little bit. I'm still trying to perfect exactly how crispy it is. Brick wants it to be nice and crispy and have a crust on it. But we're gonna put a whole bunch of wet shit on top of it so it kind of doesn't. Mm. There went the there went the <laughs> PG rating for the show. Great. We promised nothing. Ruined. We promised nothing. Damn it. Oh, <laughs> shit, sorry. <laughs> oven crisp it up make sure when you show this to your children that you bleep out the appropriate parts we'll be right back all right so the potatoes are in the oven and they are crisping up so that they can be very crispy <laughs> Ooh, great now we're going maybe we to... should stop referring to the things that go on top of it later as the, the wet, wet stuff, stuff. <laughs> doesn't sound terribly appetizing <laughs> This is not my problem. Hey, guess what? While we're away, we checked two things. Oh, yes. Two things. One, Martha Stewart does not have her own line of clothing. Well, no, we're not sure. Oh, yeah. Well, Alexa didn't know, but I'm going to say no. Also, the thing I couldn't think of that Martha Stewart went to prison for, insider, insider trading. trading. <laughs> I was struggling with my understanding of the world. All right. So, we're going to brown up these uh, turkey sausage. Any breakfast turkey sausage will work. In fact, any type of turkey sausage will work. Um, any type of sausage would work. Any type of if sausage If you don't would like work. turkey or chicken sausage. Fair, you could eat pork, but we don't ever eat pork, so that didn't occur to me. So yes, you could do that as well, or you could also use vegan sausage. Um, but we are actually going to brown these up, and then with the leftover fat that's in it, we're going to um, stir fry our vegetables afterward. Did you just call me fat? No. Hmm. All right. We weren't actually going to film this part, but Rick thinks that this skill set that I have is so valuable to share that... I'm not sure I would refer to it as valuable. I just find it interesting. Yeah, so apparently Rick... I, I, my mother did this, so I don't think that it's weird, but apparently it is. I use kitchen shears to cut meat all the time instead of a knife because it's faster and I don't like spending time doing stuff that I don't have to do. So 
Rick wants me to show you how I cut meat with scissors. So I just cut these. <laughs> I'm not sure why. I just thought it was something that would be very, very, very interesting. So if you ever were one thinking to yourself, man, I wish I had a faster way to cut meat, go buy yourself some kitchen shears and start cutting away. It's especially valuable when you're cutting links. Can you show us a link in how you're cutting it? Because all I can see is your left hand. Oh, sure. I place the link <laughs> into my hand like so, facing away from me, and then I just snip, snip, snip. <laughs> oh my god, now they're getting hot though. Wow, you know why? <laughs> They're on a stove and the heat is on. I know, I've only got one more. I'm going to be fine. Not quite sure. So when Laura was younger, she didn't understand fire. No, I actually worked as a, a bus boy girl. <laughs> wow. Um, also, a little known fact about and, Laura. When she was younger, she was a boy. <laughs> I worked as a bus person and I used to just grab hot plates all the time and I would burn my hands and then I just got really good at touching hot things and now I don't doesn't bother me. It's, a, it's exactly it's kind of why Laura likes off. to put her arm around me because she likes to, to touch hot off. things. <laughs> Alright so we have browned our turkey sausage and like I said we are going to leave um, all of the oil and juices from this turkey sausage in there because now we are going to add in our onions. This is about one large onion, um, rustically chopped. There you go, Rick. Really, really milking that for all it's worth. I know, I know back in my, my Massachusetts uh, roots. Um, red pepper. Um, we do red pepper. You can do any color pepper that you want. Red, green, any type of bell pepper. Um, our daughter likes red peppers and their vegetables and she'll eat them because they're red. I'm going to do it. And orange. She likes the orange ones too. She likes too. the orange ones. I haven't introduced you to the yellow ones yet. So, also, um, I wanted to mention that that vitamin C that we have in those sweet potatoes I'm also sneaking in for Rick in with the red peppers because there's a little bit in there too. And beyond just being really great for um, combating muscle catabolism, red peppers are also good because they are a crook. They have vitamin C, sorry, vitamin C is also good because they are essential in the production of collagen. So for runners, you're thinking about all of that pounding on the pavement, um, why, why did you say you're sneaking them in for Rick? Because you aren't getting your vitamin C with your sweet potatoes because you won't eat them. Oh, got it. Sorry. Super confused. What about the chewable vitamin C tablet I take every morning? Ruining, ruining it. Oh, I mean, I am so in need of vitamin C. I can't thank you enough for dumping those peppers in there. So that was um, about a cup of red peppers, and then two teaspoons, two tablespoons, sorry, of garlic that I just threw in there. Um, we've mentioned on previous shows the benefits of garlic, and that is going to be with immunity. Garlic is really good for your immune system. Speaking so, of garlic, would you guys like to see a really, really awesome pepper grinder from the collection? If this is your first food project, Rick has about 385 pepper grinders. It used to be 573. I know, I every, every time I'm just going to say a different number. But it's, it's, it's a lot. It's it is a lot. A lot of pepper grinders. So I'm going to take one of these pepper grinders. That I'm looks gonna, like a carrot. Is that a really a pepper grinder? Because it, it sure looks is. just like a vegetable. My gosh, look at that. And we're going to add in uh, some cumin. That's about two teaspoons of cumin. And a little bit of salt. Wow. For taste. So we want to saute these until the onions are pretty transparent. About halfway through. Should they also be aromatic? I swear to God. I said aromatic and transparent like 15 times the first episode. And now like it's, it's like I have to in my brain be like, don't say it, don't say it. 
That was one of my, like, I, I thought Martha Stewart would say it. I was just like, I'm going to say it. Or, <laughs> I never even knew that was a thing. The more you know, Rick. Bing! Oh, we should do the little rainbow, you know, the more you know thing. Shooting across, right there. There it is. All right, we're also going to add in some uh, tomatoes. I like the grape tomatoes. They're a little bit bigger than the cherry tomatoes. Um, I cut them in half or sometimes threes, but you just want to get them cut up a little bit. Toss them in. And the reason that we're sauteing all of the vegetables before we actually put them onto, um, into the casserole is because we want to get the water out. Um, it'll get really, really watery once we put it back into the oven. Maybe wet? Wet, wet. <laughs> yes. We, want... we don't want it to be so wet. Icky. Ooh. Cooking makes some of the wetness oh dry up. God. So we're going to give that a couple of more minutes. I'm going to try to figure out how to do the rest of this with Rick in the room. And we'll be right back. All right. We removed the potatoes from the oven. They were brown. And we started to assemble the casserole. First, we layered on all of the vegetables, which were aromatic and transparent when I was done with them. You might not even be able to see them in there because, because so transparent. they were so transparent. And then we added on our turkey, turkey sausage. And so you want to try to get this to be nice and even. Next, we're going to add our eggs. And eggs are one of my favorite superfood for runners for several reasons. First, they are really high in magnesium. Magnesium is essential for any type of cell production, but it's also really good for sleep. So if you're having trouble sleeping or you have been, you know, doing a lot of high training, high mileage, or even high intensity because you're building up for a race, it's really good to help your body relax so that it can repair itself at night. Eggs also have phosphorus and zinc, which are really important for bones, and vitamin B, which is essential for energy. Um, vitamin B is something, uh, vitamin B12 specifically, is something that we all tend to be deficient in and we supplement. If you're interested in supplementation and micronutrients, you can check out our Zoom call next week. The last thing that eggs are really good for is eating? Yeah. Because they taste so the good? The second to last thing that eggs are really good for. Um, is that they have a lot of iron, and iron is essential for any runner. As you are pounding that pavement, your blood cells actually do something called lice, and that means they break apart. And blood cells carry oxygen to all of the tissues in your body, including your muscles, right? And so iron is important for your blood cells to be able to carry that and for the production of new blood cells. So if you are in high training mileage, you can actually become anemic. This is more a problem for females than it is males, but males, oh, hi, Maya. That's our dog. But back, 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 to, back to program, back to previously back scheduled to programming. <laughs> but males can also experience anemia. So eggs are a really good source of iron to help with that. For those of you who are having terrifying images of picking lice out of your children's hair, Insert graphic here. And, and we apologize. I'll insert a graphic of actual... <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to flip me off. <laughs> so I thought you were going to insert the following graphic. There you go. <laughs> All right. So once again, you could use real eggs or you could get eggs in a carton because we like to do things really fast. So This is also egg whites in a carton. These are egg whites in a carton. So if but we're going to do egg whites because we tend to eat egg whites over eggs. Not all the time. Um, Are there no eggs at all in this? Egg whites. Don't we do both sometimes? Sometimes. Can we do both tonight? No. Oh. Because this is what I prepared. Oh. All right. Mmm. I can't wait. So, <laughs> you can take 10 eggs or you can take one carton of cage-free liquid eggs. They're easy and tasty. Insert other graphic here. Wow. 
And you're just gonna pour that entire thing all over. Now you know what she was talking about when she said it's going to be very wet. This is Because that looked very wet. This is why I don't think the whole toasting of the potatoes is ever going to work out really well for Rick. He wants it to be like a crust on the bottom. I do. Just dumped all those eggs in there and now it's wet. wet. Speaking of another thing that Laura mentioned is that this is good. Um, it, uh, some of the vitamins in eggs and nutrients in eggs um, will help you to sleep at night. And just so you know, oh, yes. this is currently being filmed at 10 p.m. at night. Because and that is because we're we going have... to have this for dinner. Oh, yes. I was going to say we have kids. In oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you're wondering where our kids are. All right. We're back. We're back. We are back. But what no, I was going to say was the fact that we are making this at 10 p.m. at night is that it's also breakfast okay. casserole isn't just for breakfast anymore. Eggs. We're going to eat it for dinner. It's what's for dinner. Wow. Okay. Cheese. The next step, friends is cheese. And who doesn't love cheese? Especially unless you're vegan. This is about, well, guess that there, there is a fantastic vegan cheese. That is a heavy, heavy overstatement. No, I but, like it. It's delicious. Hmm. Anyway. Tastes great. So you're going to take about a cup of cheese and we are going to spread this all on top. How much cheese do you think that is? A cup? Oh, did you already say that? I just said I'm that. I'm sorry. My bad. You're not paying attention even a little bit. I was watching videos on my phone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so that's on there. We're gonna cover this with tin foil. We're gonna stick it back in our oven, and when it comes out, it's gonna look great. Stay tuned. Peace out, homies. Oh my God. All right, it's been about 20 minutes, and about five minutes ago, I removed the tin foil from the top of the casserole dish so that it could get a little bit brown. Because everybody's oven is a little bit different, one sure way to make sure that it is done is if you jiggle it. Oh my God, I know. Sorry, not, not what I was expecting. In the middle, expecting. it doesn't move. Then you know that your eggs are set. All right. So you don't want it to be like a jello mold. Correct, no jello mold. We are ready to serve, and we recommend topping off um, the casserole with a little bit of avocado and serving it with a side salad and lemon vinaigrette. That lemon vinaigrette recipe is in episode two when we made our cauliflower and chickpea rice bowls. Also, or white bean rice bowls. Oh, it was white bean, wasn't it? My bad. And Rick wants to make sure that I show you how to use the, all of his different garlic pepper grinders. Well, pepper grinders. Pepper grinders. This okay. one happens to be this shaped like garlic. garlic. So we're just going to add a little bit of pepper on there to the side. Maybe for the well. other one. Oh, he wants me to use R2D2. Okay, here we go. Nothing but time here. Oh my God, that's ridiculous. This is the worst pepper grinder in the entire world. Don't ever buy this. It's R2-D2, you have to buy it. it. I can't even turn it. All right, there it is. And here we go. That was R2-D2, everybody. That was R2-D2. A winning recipe.